Um, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for Monday, uh, excuse me, for March 15th, 2023. The time is uh, 1.03 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting uh, on Zoom and here at the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, Mass General Law chapter 30A section 20 until March 31st, 2023. Um, meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. This one is not, we're just recording it. We'll upload it after. There's a toll-free number, 833-548-0276. Um, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. Um, you can find this meeting on the Town of Deerfield's website under the select board. Um, you'll just click on there. You'll see our agenda with a link for the Zoom meeting. Um, so we'll call the meeting to order. We're suspending public comment. Um, during the for purposes of discussion and we'll resume at the regularly scheduled next meeting. Um, we have appearances today at, at one o'clock meeting with um, nonprofits to discuss the old Deerfield wastewater treatment facility. Then we'll, um, when we're done with that, we have a couple small items to address after. So all that said, welcome <laughs> every meeting. I make a motion that pretty soon we get rid of all of that. <laughs> it's just this. <laughs> Oh man! Second, so, thank you. Yeah, it's there you go. Years now. Maybe we can record that. it and just to, you know, yeah, yeah, introduce the date and press a button. Exactly. Get a celebrity to record that for you, Trevor. It'd be a lot of fun. Trevor can probably say that in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, welcome. So we're here today. We received your your email and yeah, first information stuff. Um, so we wanted to hear from you today and kind of get your thoughts on what you were thinking. And yeah, I think more than anything, I think the goal today would be to hear from you. Uh, so I would, uh, you know, yeah. uh, I'll smack the tennis ball back uh, <laughs> into your side of the court. I okay. think the goal was, was, you know, I think as we stated in, in prior discussions, we would initiate this review and mm -hmm. have a moment to come back at, at different points in time. So right. I think as we committed, our team uh, produced what we, what we expected, uh, which was sort of an initial report uh, with some feasibility items. Yep. Um, you know, and, and then, uh, we, we did give them the go ahead to move to sort of phase two of that, which is, uh, a more comprehensive schematic design that would allow for us to get an estimate. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, the, the, the purpose of, of sort of seeking out a discussion is just to say, here's this initial report, right? Uh, what feedback do you have as we go through the process? Um, I do, I do want to take a moment just to say that, um, uh, as you noted, probably noted in the report, uh, the team was exceptionally complimentary of uh, of the operations at the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant, the conditions, um, which obviously played a role in, in sort of their suggestions on potential options for design. Right. I think once again, the, the goal of this is not to dictate anything. I think right. it's a it's a data gathering opportunity yep. uh, to look at options and and come up with a with a slate of of uh, potential designs and approaches and costs right. uh, as the town thinks about how to address uh, that aging infrastructure and how to make an investment right. uh, from a capital standpoint. So yep. with that said, John, Jeff, anything to wraps it up. So I think, oh, Carolyn, Carolyn's got her hand up. Wanna... Oh, I, I guess, and, and that's, I just wanted to make sure we had enough um, discussion so that you didn't spend any more money because, um, Going forward, be, uh, you know, I we had a, some concerns, but my main concern was the size of the um, plant. We we didn't really want to cut down on the permit, um, so that was my major concern. And the reason why, one of the reasons why, is no matter, you know, this is supposed to be a long term fix. So even if we get all the pipes fixed at one point, they're going to start degrading again and we're going to have i and i concerns and we do have we're over permit already enough that 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 is a huge concern for me um if we do the reduction and then if we have um you know if you ever do decide to go forward with your building of the faculty housing there behind um the end of old main street 
you know, we, we want to make sure we have capacity to hook on extra stuff. So, you know, just from a future point of view, I, that was my major concern. And, and that was why I was worried that you were, or why I wanted this meeting, because I didn't want you to spend money um, on a smaller design. That, that really seems to be my major concern. So um, thinking, thinking about this as well, um, you know, when I saw the report back, I, I saw the reduction of like 40% in the permitting um, capacity and I'm not in favor of that. I'd like to keep, keep it where we are. And I know that there are times that we don't use that fully. And I think that's what, what the engineers and the, arch the architects were looking at were okay, what's your, you know, what's your average flow and, and all of that, but, but we do run into times where we, where we exceed that. And, and so looking at, I think the plan was to, in, in this, a couple of issues I have, but the plan that um, they're looking at was to turn our um, aeration tanks into kind of reservoir holding tanks. And so that they could kind of handle, because an MBR can't process, um, it can't process more than it's designed for. And it's designed for less. So when you have a large flush coming through, the idea is to kind of use those holding tanks and then, and then you know trickle it in as as you can. Um, and I think I have a concern that those are going to get overwhelmed. I think the plant is really getting designed for smaller than um, than we want, smaller than it's permitted for. And the other part of it is I'm concerned of um, speaking with the operator really concerned about two different plants um, that are under our, our care. You know, we have, we would be designing a completely different processing system there than we have in South Deerfield. And what works right now and what makes it easy is that people can cross chain and then go from one plant to the other. And it's the same process, same pump, same, same design. And, um, and MBR is fairly costly to run. They're tricky and they um, they don't last as long. So you wind up having to change them out in about 10, 15 years, something like that. Um, maybe sooner, it depends on the flow and on all of that. Uh, so we, I was concerned about the technology option. I, I think it's important to look at those ideas and see, you know, it does this make sense? But um, and, and to look at alternatives. That's what you would want it to do from, from day one. Is, is there something different than a clarifier, you know, a, a headworks building and that? Um, and I think this shows that that's an option, but my concern is that it's not going to be big enough to handle the flows or any growth in the future. And then we have to have a different, you know, different parts, different training facility, you know, different, it's just a different system altogether. And I'm not an engineer on this, and I um, it's been a little tricky because we haven't been able. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Finish up. Just... Uh, it's been a little tricky because I don't. You know, um, we have an engineer that kind of come up with a plan, and we are comfortable with and and wanted to look at. Um, and then and you got a team looking at that, but it's and we're kind of stuck. I wanted to bring this back to our engineer. They're kind of like, you know, it, it's it's. Um, yeah. To be fair to them. Right. Um, I wanted to explore one of the things that you stated and we're thankful for is that you, that you have this idea of a reasonable cost to have somebody look at these designs. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it would serve any purpose to have, you know, your engineering firm, you know, look at uh, the plan that DPC came up with and try to give us advice. And I don't think it would be wise to have DPC look at yours and give you advice um, so we would like to explore getting a third party to give us some based on engineering and experience uh, review of these concepts. Um, so can we explore what reasonable is? And, you know, if we did it now rather than later, um, then, you know, maybe we avoid the cost to you of going through something or we might find out, hey, this is great. Um, let's let them continue. Um, so you know, I uh, am interested in, is $8,000 reasonable? Is $10,000 reasonable? I'm engineering firms charge a lot of money to do a, what might seem to me a small amount of work, but um, do you have any thoughts on that? 
I think if you have a proposal, we're happy to look at it. Okay, yeah. great. Because I, I have reached out to a couple of different companies um, and I'm just waiting back to hear from them. I provided uh, both the DPC concept and the, uh, and, um, you know, the RH white concept and um, said, this is the information we have. What would, you know, what would it cost for us to have you look at these, you know, ideas and give us some good feedback that we could, you know, use for actionable decision making. Yeah. But I sustain that I also agree that the permitting thing is is an issue for me, um, just because, uh, you know, if you got a certain amount of uh, government approval for for a, an important piece of infrastructure like this, not knowing what growth might occur in the future, how many more people might be tied in from running a pipe in the lower section of five and ten, um, you know, and feeding it into this, uh, these are all questions that. Uh, and looking at the data from stormwater and what gets in through pipes, et cetera. I know that's been a concern of yours um, and that we're looking to address that by fixing uh, the pipes. But yeah. all of those things just seems prudent to keep the permit we have. Yeah, I, I, I don't know enough about the legal or regulatory process mm -hmm. there. I mean, right. it, it seems that you could permit for some level that doesn't mean you have to build to that level, right? Right. Um, so you can maintain a permit at that level and pay for it, it seems, while operating something smaller and provide that long-term flexibility. I think if there's additional data that you have that can be supplied to the team to look at, but, you know, when I look at the data here that's calculated in the report, you know, designing a plant that's four times the size, well, just... They only looked at two years. They didn't go back. We have 15 years of data and they only went back two years, which it has been our driest you know, session. So they really didn't look back at a long history of um, of what we have for flows. And, yeah. and that was part of my concern. It's like, if they could, if we can get them all that data, we didn't, we, we had a gap in a bit when Keith left, we had a gap in our um, data, but we ended up getting it from DEP. So we have all those flows now, because I think the, the last couple of years didn't show the true nature of what the plan is. It didn't have, you know, Irene in there and all the other, you know, times that we've yeah. gone above permit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Having Irene in there is kind of like budgeting based off of COVID. So. It is. Uh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and ultimately that's why we want to bring in an engineer because, you know, I'm not an engineer and Trevor's not an engineer. Carolyn's not an engineer. And I, I just played one on TV. I played yeah. one on TV. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, we, we want to be making a decision based on an independent person's review of these two things. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and I, and we want to make sure, I mean, I think uh, the team has been great. I think we yeah. found some uh, as built plans for, yes. for the plant that I think will be exceptionally helpful. But I think if there's data and we've, we've, you know, asked that all along, uh, right. happy to, yep. to have that, that may change. I mean, if you have 15 years worth of data, happy to, to give yep. that to the team. And, and, you know, I think the, the goal here is just to be as educated as we can be. Sure. Um, I need to be as educated as I can be to say to uh, the board, at least for our organization, I imagine John and, mm -hmm. and Eric and others, uh, I don't want to speak for them, but you know, if, if we're going to be asked to, to contribute to a project, they're going to look at us and say, how do you feel about that? Right. right? And I think this is part of the due diligence that, that, sure. that should go into uh, before, you know, making a commitment to that uh, right. and thinking about it. Yep. So, no. I, you know, I think all of that is is helpful. So if there's additional data that you feel that this report is missing, we, we welcome that. We welcome yep. giving it to the team and asking them to to, to shine a light on it right. um, and, and think about it. Yeah, and I do want to just thank you again, because when we started this project, I mean, we've looked at several several iterations of different ideas. So we we had the one pump station, we had the two pump station, we had uh, you know thirty five million dollar project, we had a low end twenty three million dollar. Then we decided that's you know doesn't make any sense. And so this is this is like the second round of considering what are options. Um, and you know we may reach a different decision at the end. You may think what you design is perfectly wonderful, and we may, for other perfectly defensible reasons, decide that we don't like it. Or we might decide, hey, this is great. But the engineering, independent engineering help, is something that will be a key component for me in in you know being able to evaluate this. So um, I had hoped to have at least one of those 
sort of a, a ballpark figure that I did talk with one of the companies about was, yeah, 8,000 seems about right. I've got 40, I, I've got my wa my wage and my other, uh, my lower priced person. And I was just thinking, okay, this is going to take 40 week, 40 hours. And uh, sure. But he said, I, I have to talk with other people in the organization. So that's, that's the only figure I have at this point. But as soon as I have something, I'll send it along to everyone. Great. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, 250 was the high price and 200 was the low price and 40 hours and boom, you know, and I came up with that without doing any of that stuff. Uh, Cause I thought maybe that's a reasonable number, but again, I'm not an engineer. So. I, I choose the hourly, hourly rate side helps. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So looking at RH White's um, plan and this, this was probably the stuff that you kind of laid out with them. So it was to kind of come up with this MBR option. Uh, it was it was to oh, look at the plant, assess the plant, yeah. and come up with an option and that says, right. Here, here's that. what we see as the most viable approach forward with respect to the data that they had access to and everything. We did not dictate. No, that, that's what I was getting at, because yeah. I saw there was other options like um, develop a class three cost estimate for, for a new wastewater treatment plant installation on site and adjacent to it. And then there was another develop a class five order of magnitude concept cost for a pump station down to probably the, oh, to Greenfield was to look at another option that way as well. I didn't know if- um, that, That's what were, they're engaged in right now, Trevor? They're, they're looking at those so, items. So okay. they did phase one, which was, yep. let us let us look at some data. Let's let's look at a few things. And now we've released them to- To look at these to, other to, items. To look at these other items. Correct. Okay, yep, that's what I was trying to- um, I I just wanted to say that uh, years ago, I had tried to get a HUD grant to hook up Old Deerfield to Greenfield sewer treatment plant and then hook up Sunderland to South Deerfield. And it was about $20 million at the time. And uh, it was under us, you know, by the time we went through the grant process, it had creeped up to about 38. Um, but... Um, we found out at the time Greenfield had to have, they had to apply with us to be successful because they had to have so many upgrades. So um, I just want to make sure, I think we have some information on those upgrades because I'm not sure how much has been done. Um, I, I could try to dig it out for you. I'm sorry, um, I hadn't thought of that earlier. I apologize. Yeah, Carolyn, any any and all information is great. Yeah, I'll try to see if I can find it. Um, the The problem was we we got actually through all the hoops. We had the public hearing, everything. I thought we had the grant, but um, it ended up being sent to uh, Springfield. <laughs> so they were a last minute ap application, and we just didn't compare from um, you know uh, equity point of view, but. Uh, we had gathered a quite a lot of information. So I will try to, it might be in the files. So I'll talk with Chris Nolan and see if we can dig around and find some of that information. Cause those, that information on the Greenfield plant will have a huge impact on um, being the connector. Cause it's just not getting up to Greenfield. It was a capacity issue for them. Understood. Do you know if they looked at a, a conventional plan at all, like the one that we were hoping to do? Like or, or early on, we were looking at a clarifier and that kind of thing. Or they, I just wondered, had they evaluated all options and kind of felt like this one was? More... I mean, we asked them. We we asked, like I said, yeah. we didn't dictate to them what you know. We we relied upon R. H. White's technical experience and Time Bond's technical experience to say. Look at the data. What come up with do? a design concept. What would you do? What yeah. What's the suggestion? Yeah. Um, I mean, we can ask them to 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 look at that. I was just curious if if they had or or, or just had, there was a reason they felt uh, it isn't worth it here to kind of continue with what we had to do something different. And um, yeah, I guess that'll be a question for them. I guess. Let me. Let me I just have uh, one comment related to that, and again, I I, I would never purport to have um, any knowledge uh, that would be helpful here about permitting or yeah. flow, but in terms of um, exploring new technology, I, I I hope I can absolutely see how there would be some reassurance from an operational standpoint that whatever we do in Old Deerfield. Um, 
uh, is feels the same in terms of operation as what's going on in South Deerfield. But since we have the two plants that are kind of in staggered series of, of renovation, um, I hope we could weigh what you would gain by that with what you would lose if you're if you're not open to innovation and in technology. Sure. If you always have to be tagging what you're going to be doing in the next plant to what you did five to ten years ago in the old plant, I would worry that um, you know we kind of cut ourselves off to possible efficiencies and, and innovation. No, no, we we want to take all of that in. I think just the initial feedback that we got. Uh, just asking around was that the MBR design is a lot more labor intensive time wise for to work on and and not as uh, it's a little more it's more complex to use than the system we have so then you you need more personnel working it and the longevity of the of the uh, it's it's a it's a membrane so you're sending stuff through a membrane catching it so cleaning that membrane, replacing that membrane is, is more labor intensive and costly to, to run than a basic, you know, sludge facility. But, um, but we do, we, I agree with you completely. If there's other technology that we're missing or um, that's why the idea of like, okay, we've got these original sludge design, we have an MBR design, what are the pros and cons to both and how, you know, how do we make a good decision long-term for, for the users and, and and the town to um, it's hard to get staff, really hard to find staff to run plants. So making sure that we're being as efficient as we can and having like-minded plants means you can have redundant pumps, that kind of thing. So that's the only reason we kind of were leaning that way, but um, we do need to explore it. I'm not. You know, yeah, right and again, just to come back to, you know, we need to get an independent engineering firm that can tell us you know, an independent view of whether this technology makes sense for this size plant in this community um, or whether a conventional plant is the right way to go. And, uh, you know, so that's what we, we'd we like to do that. Uh, just in great. Uh, I think that's the next step for us. Yes. Yeah, so and you guys can continue along the path that you've outlined um, with your engineers. And uh, <clears throat> I, I agree with I agree with that because I you know, you can call around, but, our, you know, the our size plant versus somebody else's size plant, you know, how that technology works. We're open to anything, but we want to make sure that we're picking the right choice. That's all. So having somebody help us with that is really huge, I think. Yeah. And I would just encourage and say that anything you can provide to us, yep. like this discussion today, uh, if you, you want to send us a, a note that says here are the areas after reviewing the material that we have questions about that the team should evaluate, great. Here's additional data. Great. Uh, I, I think the more we have, the better the process will be. For sure. Uh, and allow for for the team that we that we're we're seeking out. I mean, I think the ultimate goal here is just to be as informed as we can when we right. raise our hands and say yes, we want to spend X amount of money. And we looked uh, at all the options. Yeah, and yep. we've looked at all the options. So I think it it, it will yep. bring a lot of clarity yeah. uh, to to the public uh, when right. money has to be spent in this fashion. Sure. Um, and, you know, so I think anything you can supply to us, if there's feedback you're getting either from your operations right. team, from your design team, uh, if there's data, um, yep. we're, we're happy to, to include that in the material that we use. I think they're using Perfect. what's been supplied in prior reports and prior public right. documents, which may not be everything that, that yeah. that's available. Well, definitely we'll do that. Great. I will get all that data and get it over to you. And then just kind of I'll get some time to outline um, a couple of areas I had questions on. And maybe we can get back to the team and they could say, well, this is why we looked at this versus that. Great. Um, we yeah. want to try to get in the next funding cycle for USDA, the, um, you know, the grant um, loan cycle. So that's yeah. what we're hoping to do. And, and is there a timeline you can share for that, Carolyn, so that we're we're being thoughtful about that? Well, the U USDA's, you know, they they're on the federal, um, you know, uh, fiscal year. So there's the new federal year is October first. So we want to try to get this information together and figure out a route so that we can be in the next funding, you know, the fiscal twenty four year. Great. Last time when we did the other plant, we found out in September, I believe it was, we had tried for the 
for a July vote. And I think it was a little later in the year we got the vote from the town to move forward. But the way USDA works is they only have a small amount of money. And then after everything like hasn't been spent, they kind of pull from different states and regions and like they have this kitty of money left over. And that's how we were able to get more money than originally, you know, hoping for. We were hoping for a lot more. And with all the federal money swashing around, I, I can't, it's just so frustrating that we're here years after the bills have come through Congress and 1.7 billion goes to the state. And we're still going, where's the money? How do we get access? And it's super frustrating that- um, It's, it's 2.7 billion that disappeared. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was part of our 12 billion. Yes, I have no idea where it went. No one knows, seems to know. But um, the IRA money, Inflation Reduction Act money is, is going to be released in this fall. And so we need, we want to make sure we're there because your agency's existing programs are supposed to get some kind of extra bump. So we want to make sure we're in line in that bump. Thank That's all. A lot of the money goes to the SRF, the State Water and Infrastructure Program, but um, it's so expensive for us to try and use that program because it's a 20-year note where USDA is a 40-year. It allows us to kind of stretch out our payments a lot more and make it more affordable for everybody to, to do this stuff. But so yeah. we're hoping that they get they get some money and make it you know easier for us. But. So what's the timeline, Sherman? You uh, September is typically when we found out last time. What what do you have to provide to them to see if you get the money? So you have to do a uh, so la last time uh, Dave's team put together an application for USDA and we did that through the the spring and summer I believe, and then we we kind of waited around to find out and then we got. Uh, then we got approval in September, I think it was. But just to be clear, this is not a grant. This is uh, a grant and loan money. It was it's a loan interest. Grant and loan. Grant and loan. Right. Grant so and loan. Yeah, yeah, they right. gave us like a, a 1.6, I want to say, grant. And then the rest was all loan at access, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Like one out of order it, it, it was yeah yeah it's very it's low interest plus um but the grant part doesn't really kick in until the end of the i mean sure. you have to make all the payments all right. first so and then they yeah. forgive you on the end i thought the, the grant portion was a little larger but it, it as the be. as the as the plant got more expensive i don't know if we got more we did not yeah so, so they gave us more loan but we are a, we are as a as a community of our size we're eligible for a lot higher percentage of you know, grant than we got. And maybe that was because we were in, we were in the end, end of the cycle versus the beginning of the cycle. And I don't know exactly, sure. we are talking about the, with the US, USDA Rural Development Fund for another project. Sure. Uh, and, sure. um, you know, it's funny that, you know, we're 35% grantable. So 35% of the cost of the plant could be great. But Unfortunately, you know, we got 10%. Yeah. yeah. And um, so it's, it's definitely something we want to try and maximize. Obviously, we've spent two years talking about this and construction costs have gone up, you know, probably 15 to 20% unusually because of COVID, et cetera. Right. And, uh, you know, so it's becoming cost ineffective to continue the discussion um, beyond a certain point. So probably by the next two months, we want to be able to make a decision about right. which path we're following. Well, USDA gets their money through the farm bill and there's a brand new farm bill up, right? That will be voted this year. So it's the beginning of, you know, the cycle where we were at the end of the cycle, five-year cycle, because there are mm -hmm. five-year farm bills. So yeah. Jim McGovern, is wonderful. He works with us. He's on the Ag Commission, I mean, the Ag um, Committee, and he's the only one from New England. So, um, you know, he has a good opportunity to put us through. So um, that will make a big difference, I think. And did you say that town meeting approval has to happen before we would be submitting? You can apply uh, for a grant, um, but you needed town meeting approval before you sign with them. So, yep. yep they'd have to... Yeah, so we could lock in an agreement if we got a favorable one and then go tell 
the residents why it's favorable. Yeah, that was. The we we normally are going to have to we've because of the late budgeting cycle we've had to have fall town meetings anyway. I mean we just it never it used to be unusual but now it's just kind of like a regular thing to straighten out our budget. And I guess I guess the, in the value of your team looking at the plant and us kind of looking at it again and and having a, a, a different operator as well makes a world of difference on kind of view and how it can how that plant how long it can last before it falls apart right I mean anything can happen that electrical is wicked old and you can't really get the stuff anymore but it, it seems like you know I just want to take enough time that we're not rushed on a schedule you know what I mean we have time to kind of look this over and it seems like we yeah. can band-aid it for a little longer I'll, I'll be but, honest with you Trevor my my bandwidth at this point to keep talking about wastewater treatments uh is shrinking so I would hope that within the next six months we can great. we can wrap this up and and Good. give some right. some idea to the town of, of what direction we're going and yep. um I'll just say we, we as as we've committed we remain committed to continuing I mean I think we can upgrade the plant, but if we don't deal with the infrastructure that feeds the plant, yes. uh, and so I, you know, Thank I just want to once again say we're we're committed to that, and and hopefully yeah. the the commitment we've made to to replace the existing line down Little Meadow Road is something we can achieve and yeah. yeah in short order, and and we remain committed to doing those types of projects because we see that as being just incredibly important, um, yeah. and so. Um, overall, I mean, I hope that we can we can move this in the right direction, and and the more sure. information you have that you can share with us and as we've committed we'll continue to be transparent as we go through this process so that's good yeah that's good. We, we also are applying for a hazardous mitigation grant um it's fall cycle um and it's a fall pot of money set aside on the percentage of uh declarations federal declarations and uh, it, it's to replace the piping along pine nook road which okay. is you know is 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 like a faucet already yeah. so it could be one of the things contributing to those high flow moments caroline <laughs> yes oh absolutely it is absolutely and it's only getting worse yeah great okay all right Good. thank you yeah Thanks so I, anything you send to us that would be great and we'll yeah. we'll make sure that we send this uh this recorded meeting to our team so that sure. they can follow up and, and hear the comments sure. that, that you all had perfect so yeah thank you I'll for making the time write some some stuff out and i'll get you those the, great and as, as soon as I get a number, I will share it with you. As I, I expected it before today, but sure. um, uh, you know these things slip when the big big companies. So yeah, totally understand. Great, thank you. Thank you. All yeah. right. Good to see you again. Yep. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Jeff. See you, see you Carolyn. I'll send you that email. Yeah. Okay. Find that electronic. Okay. I wrote a note down when I first said. Good to see you, Jeff. Thank you. I, uh, I don't think we have any minutes, do we? No, uh, we, we have, but I don't I don't think I have them on the okay. Or did you approve them last time? Well, we didn't I have the minutes here. I can run through them, but I I was gonna be abstaining on all the ones that I didn't participate in, so it's gonna be a one person. One so, zero one. Did you did you do minutes on the eighth? No, we we because oh. because Tim was gonna. Um, so, I mean, oh, you got, it, do, got it. I have the minutes in here, unless you have that packet. I should but, have that packet here. Yeah, because there were like four from the twenty twenty. So we just put them off, Trevor, because uh, Tim didn't feel comfortable. No, but I mean, he can I'm vote, not vote on any minutes I didn't take part in. So, right. Yeah. Uh, let me just look at these real quick.
some of them are from different meetings too. Like they are, yeah. The zoning board you were in. and, and yep. the, the senior center booth. Yeah, we, we just decided to put them off, Trevor, until you came. Okay. But if we could get them out of the way today, yeah, we won't have to do it we later. Can do that. Yep. Yeah, why don't you make, if you or you got them right there, make a I'll motion, do, Trevor, a second. I'm just going to go through them real quick here. Yeah, no problem. Um, no stuff. Okay. Let's just put it in. Fun. This is a good minute. Good minutes. Well, it's like pretty exciting that we're getting caught up. It is. It is. We had a COVID lack. Big lapse there. That was pretty bad. That was a fun meeting. Okay, so um, back in the beginning here. Okay, so um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for February 10th, 2021. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. And then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 8th, 2023. And a second. Oh, okay. Any further oh. discussion? No, we already approved those. Didn't oh, we? yeah, we. I think we did. But let's just vote it again in case we didn't. Oh. But I'm pretty sure we did because Tim, Tim was oh, here. You, did it if you just did yeah. the ones that were, I got yeah, you. There was only I one that made. we could vote yep. on. Got it. Got it. But we can vote on it again. All right, let's do a second round. <laughs> All, All right. those in favor. Tim Hill, G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Just in case. I'm pretty sure we did, though, Tim. Thank you. Uh, the next one is um, for July 1st, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, G. Abstain. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Thank you. The um, the next set would be April 29th, 2021. Approve a motion to approve the minutes for April 29th, 2021, a joint meeting with the ZBA. And I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. You. And the final, I believe, is um, I make a motion to approve the minutes for June 22nd, 2021. Now second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. Thank you all for completing those minutes. Um, yes. Let's see. The... Um, so we have um, a discussion of the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant for the Deerfield Elementary School entrance. Yes, and um, MA is here uh, to to or I, I see her floating around. Could come to the table, MA. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was she was gonna help us try to remember what was going on in this meet the meeting. On what meeting? What on the um, the vulnerability um, preparedness. We we had a meeting um, Friday after after we when we were meeting with the governor and lieutenant governor. Okay. Uh, we were trying to figure out what we, how we could scale it down because I think there was no question that um, three hundred and fifty or four hundred thousand for the entrance way was just not going to happen. Right. But one of the suggestions that would be very attractive is um, stamped decorative yeah, asphalt. I think it was, well, it's more expensive than regular asphalt, but it's much more attractive. Um, and it's, and it's uh, you know, like 20% more expensive versus hugely more expensive for the impervious, um, right. impervious pave, pavements. Yeah. So what we were trying to do was figure out how we could use the decorative asphalt that would give us long life because, and, and, and MA brought up the fact that, you know, this is the main entrance. We're going to be using a lot of salt and you can't force the school because it's more expensive to use the sodium chloride or whatever that's more expensive. Right. So we have to say that it's probably going to be rock salt. So concrete anyway, probably was not a good thing. So, um, so that we thought the decorative asphalt plus some of the green features, you know, was a, a uh, which we could get funded by the MVP grant made sense. So it, it would be, um, we would not have to come up with a match to 400 and something thousand. We would come up with a match of to uh, like a hundred and something. What it wasn't it MA? It was like 120 or something. Well, yeah, originally we I were don't... talking like 80 something thousand for the project. Yeah, right. So we only have to come up with a match of like 25% of that. I think it was the 80, 85, I think. To pave it. Oh, that think. was just strictly paving. Part of it. Yeah. And that was. Yeah, I mean, Carolyn, I think my recollection is closer to MA's in that we talked about separating the right. infrastructure, the, the hardscaping or whatever that is from the MVP portion, which is, you know, um, rain gardens, et cetera, to deal with the runoff from whatever surface is put in there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was 80, 80 to 89,000. So our 25% match would be in the 20,000 range to 25,000 range. Right. And the decorative asphalt um, was it was around 80 ish. So we were coming up because the, the, there was misinformation on the drainage. The drainage was not what was initially, um, when Chris initially said that 400,000 stuff, it was, um, that included the drainage for the entire roof system. That's right. not true. It's just the little shed kind of looking uh, entrance. So that changed the calculations hugely. It didn't trigger anything, which is also very important. So um, we we our our initial budget where the school was going to pay half and we were going to pay half in the forty-ish, fifty-ish um, range for the entire thing seemed like it was still viable. So in other words, we weren't going to come up with any more money than we had initially already committed to the school also not having to come up with any more than they committed to we get this combination plan of you know decorative asphalt and then the green features that would be paid for well, um, with we, the match we would need um you know probably you know berkshire design to kind of lay out a plan right that we can go out to bid with that would be you know that's, and that's asphalt. what what we wanted to make sure is that there was public discussion um, you know, and that you were on board with this so we could go forward with putting um, the actual grant in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, and I just didn't know what the uh, cost was going to be to do, you know, how much green infrastructure we needed to kind of deal with that small drainage from the roof. I know originally Kip, Kip had the guys cut that and drain just that into there because it was creating a lot of ice in front of there and that seemed to have worked but now the pavement's all messed so um as to deal with some of that small water 
but to make the place attractive in the long run, because it is the front of the school, kids line up there. That was the idea of those those stamp lines for the grades to line up as they go in and and then, but to have it easy enough to be plowed and like you said, salted um, and snow blowed, however, just not- That's why we were thinking of the uh, decorative asphalt. It, yeah. would, it would work and it's a much cheaper solution than the right. pervious, impervious, yeah, pervious pavements. I always get that mixed up. You know what I meant. Crosswalks painted to look like brick. That kind of all kind. You see that. Well, they stamp them. You can look it up online. It's you can get all kinds of stuff, but it looks very attractive. We can just make sure we get an attractive, mm -hmm. you know, brick looking kind of thing. But it's still asphalt. Yep. And that way, um, it will have more longevity with salting and stuff because there's nothing we can do about it. So you know, especially with climate change, we're going to have more icing events. You just we're going to have to use salt. Everybody. I mean, it's really negative uh, from a mosquito point of view, you know, to use so much salt because it makes it more, al you know, more um, like your marsh, marsh. How do the ticks go for salt? Oh, well, it does keep the ticks down. <laughs> All right, so there's trade-offs. Yes, um, it's no good for our mosquitoes, let me tell you. That's why we got to get that I, marijuana plant going. Come I don't on. think ticks are an issue in front of the school. No, yeah. I was being, you know. I know facetious I, know. I mean everybody gives me a hard time about bugs but they're getting worse guys so it sounds like where we are is we need to know what the cost of i mean my re recollection of the discussion is that we could use the ebi design if we wanted to put it out to um looked at stamp asphalt versus regular ass i mean if we're going to use regular asphalt I, if we were so concerned about cost the cheapest thing to do would be to pick the the width and make a straight line with whatever surface you want to choose and have grass next to it and, and make sure that water can infiltrate into the ground. Um, but, you know, if we're going to go forward with a plan to make it look attractive, um, hiring Berkshire Design to design something like EBI design, and if we just ask them, look, can you design this in stamped asphalt? What would it cost? that would be at least we get a number right now we're just making up numbers as far as i can tell i know chris was really concerned about getting the in getting the paperwork to berkshire right and and in a timely fashion so right for for him to be able to do the um do the application paper. yeah yeah we we do need to have some cost estimates right we had an initial cost estimate to pave the front that's where the 80 something came from i could find it somewhere right but it, but that wasn't kind of doing any kind of seating or cement work or, you know, we have a bench out there. There's a tree to deal with, dealing with the water that comes off the front, that kind of thing. I don't know. Right. No, the 80,000 was just repaving because right. we have to make it. I mean, we have an obligation to make it safe. Yeah. So. And then there's and then there's the road in front of there that's a mess, the parking lot across the street. There's just a lot to do there. But anyways. OK, so. So what do we do next steps on this? Well, as long as Trevor's okay and we have consensus, then my thought is we don't actually, we're not voting on anything because we don't know, we don't have a price. Right. But, but from what we gathered from information, because the drainage now has been downsized, it wasn't the whole roof system. So it doesn't trigger all this other stuff. And yep. then um, we're using, um, you know, the decorative stamped asphalt versus just plain asphalt. I think what we need to do is take the EBI plan. Chris Nolan can send that to Berkshire, you know, Jeff Squires. I thought he already had it though, but, um, and then try to, you know, say, this is our budget. We we're in the 40 to 50th thousand ish, you know, job area for the select board and the school. So what can you come up with and what can we come up with for, um, you know, the grant? So just to clarify, what you're saying is if the school is going to donate 40 to 50,000 and we're going to do 40 to 50,000, there will be a total of 100,000. Mm -hmm. And what can right. be done for 100,000? Right. Yeah. And then anything else it, by the grant is fine, but that includes our match. And, and, the, and from my understanding, we had Chris... Um, Curtis had a estimate of around a hundred, what was it, 120 something or 130 for the, whole, for the whole business? 
Yeah, for, for the green, some of the green yeah. infrastructure. So that we're gonna, and we're gonna be on the hook for 25 of that 25% match. So that 25% match- I don't remember those numbers. I was at the same meeting and I don't remember those numbers. Okay, so well- That's what I'm trying to- Yeah. I didn't bring, I didn't know yeah. exactly what I was supposed to bring, so I brought nothing. <laughs> so it's a- well, I just wrote down a couple things and it, it was it was incredibly vague. Yeah. Um, right. It was incredibly vague. So, so that's what I'm suggesting that if we're going to ask Jeff Squire something, we're going to ask him, okay, here's the EBI design. Mm -hmm. um, if we used stamped concrete for this area, how much? Or stamped might... asphalt. Stamped asphalt. Yeah. Stamped asphalt. Yeah. If we used stamped asphalt in to recreate this pattern, what is a price range we might expect for this project? And it, you know, that's the, that's the first. We also need to tell them crucially, we need to tell them that we're, we're willing to pay around a hundred for the, for the project and try to come up with the design elements. For the hardscape part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, cause we have to still do the match. So, I mean, my thought was. No, I mean, I thought we understood that we're not going to get money from MVP to do cement work. We're not going to get no, money. No, 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 no. But our match our split, you know, 12, you know, I, I mean, I thought it was less than 20,000. So that's split 10 each. So what do we, you have, we have 40 to 50 ish that the select board's going to pay. And 10 of that is towards the match for the MVP from my understanding. And then the school is going to volunteer, you know, is said that they would commit between 40 and 50 and 10 of that is to the MVP. So Jeff is working with a budget of of our contributions of around a hundred, however he comes up with. And then if we don't have money for to finish all the like down to the, I mean it would be nice if we could fix up the drive through there. As Trevor says, that's junky too. Oh. But if there's no money left over for that, we can't do that. One, here's one of my concerns, though, with the I just want to make sure that when we're asking for MVP money for green infrastructure, we're not looking to do a huge maintenance issue like we have on the side of the building. Right. That is a leave catch and nobody maintains it. And you, you, do, you don't have the staff to do all that stuff. And I do not want to put that in front of the building. I know. No sense to make a mess out there. I mean, Luckily, people come by and weed that thing around the tree once in a while, but nobody does the maintenance. So if we're going to be putting big sinkholes with all kinds of flowers and stuff, and we have to do it because we got this grant from MVP, let's skip the grant and just do it on our own. I know. Uh, Victoria, my daughter, Victoria, and I, because the kids had such yeah. good preschool experience. We've worked on the preschool garden in the back a few yeah. years. Ago, and, and it's overgrown again, you know, it just... <laughs> yeah, I mean, bottom line is we we need to get we need to get Berkshire Design to give us a cost estimate because yeah. as as far as I remember the conversations, the MVP portion was rain gardens and stuff. It had nothing to do with the pavement part right. of it. And if you're talking about a hundred thousand dollars, that's a number I never heard. And the rain garden portion of it was in the eighty thousand dollar range. Okay. And so you're not going to get any money for the hardscaping to be a, a part of the match because the hardscaping is not available under MVP. Right. No, that's a great, but I had heard it was not a hundred. I heard, I was hearing around 120 something. Because, I didn't hear that number either. Because the, the drainage, numbers. that was the drainage part that comes into the rain garden was downsized. That's mm -hmm. where I heard that 120. Yeah. Is that because yeah. you're putting the drainage in the rain garden, you were not putting it into the catch basin, which would have triggered all this other stuff. So that's why the other plan was so expensive. So to go back, I guess what we need to figure out is what is it going to cost to do yes. stamped pavement asphalt or um, regular asphalt? And for what we have is 80 to $100,000 for the hardscaping. Yeah. And then is it worth doing any MVP rain garden out front? Because we have to know maintenance. The, the cost of the money that we're going to have to put into the access, you know, the to the school 
is a is a number that we have fixed and Berkshire design going to have to get paid mm -hmm. and then we're going to have to pay for the asphalt so that number has to become real and then yeah. making a decision about MVP or not MVP can be based off that number I agree with that so because MVP is not always the best solution if it Cost oh, I agree. I agree. In the, in the other, in the other Leary lot setting, that's different. And and right, you know, um, Berkshire Design is, I to my mind, is making this discussion more complicated than the Leary lot because what we're saying is design the Leary lot with with infrastructure for water infiltration in it, and let us apply, let us fund it how we fund it. And if we fund it with MVP money, we're not asking for the parking lot to be built and then some other company to come in and build the MVP structures. We're asking for one company to be hired, build the design you design, and let us worry about how we're going to pay for it, whether it's MVP grant money or coming out of the town budget. Um, so I don't know why Jeff got that so complicated, but it didn't seem that complicated Still to me. Email? Yeah, okay. it was just this email trail. It was... Uh. I more frustrating than illuminating. So, um, <laughs> in relation to the timing, if Chris gets back at the beginning of April and the, and the MVP grant is due in the middle of April or whatever it is, I mean, it's, he's in a very tight schedule there. Right. And so, um, and he, and he, I know he was concerned about getting the Berkshire folks getting permission from the select board to <clears throat> to get Berkshire on board. I think there was a signature. I think if I'm not mistaken, they needed signatures on some document. Oh, it was the contract. And um I the problem was I signed it on Wednesday, you know, last Wednesday, but there was no scope of work attached. And yeah. I signed it because you know, I, I have, I, I, I can't even get down to the town hall today. So um, I was going to, if the work scope of work was attached, Tim was going to sign and Trevor, you were going to sign because we had already voted to ask, you know, Jeff Squires of um, Berkshire Design to, to do this work, Is but we didn't feel comfortable signing the contract until you the scope you had a chance to look at the scope of work yeah we need the scope of work. A, which yeah. project is that for that, that was for the elementary school oh okay good yeah that's the one i wanted to see i, I, I think chris to. nolan has the um contract scope of work because casey said it was going to it was in the process or it was gonna you know this was wednesday last yeah. week and it was she was going to have it done hopefully by Thursday or something, so yeah, it's, it's hanging, it it's hanging around. But I didn't. Tim did not want to sign it unless there was a scope of work okay. um, to attach, and I didn't want us to do anything else with it until you had a chance to read the scope of work. Right. We voted to go forward sure. with hiring them if you guys were satisfied. And the and the main issue here I'm still driving back at is the MVP. I just want to make sure that we're handling the water in a smart way and hopefully we can get some grant money for, but if it creates the same thing we did on the side of the building, I would vote against it because it's just too much maintenance. And I, I think that's the difference between using, and that's why I really didn't want to use EBI. I know that they're like cutting edge and all that, but they're not practical. I think Berkshire Design has done enough work with us. They know that we have limited staff, we have limited resources, so be more practical mm. in their design. So it still can be green, that, it still can be that. green, but it just needs to be more practical and easier on maintenance. Yeah. So how do you get a scope of work? Chris, do we have that yet? Do we have the scope of work from, um, from Berkshire Design in their contract? They had it. 2.1, but I haven't seen it. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, if you can, if you could send it out to us. If not, sure. if that's... Yeah, and it might also be useful to ask them um, to create a scope of work that in, that envisions using $100,000, including their fees, to install an entrance to this building, whether it's with regular asphalt or stamped asphalt mm -hmm. or any other material. Um, 
and having the, the dollar figure as the cost constraint because they could design anything they want sure. for a million dollars, but yep. we can't afford it. Right. Well, so, no, that was why we wanted Berkshire Design. And I think we had, or, I mean, I specified that we were only in the 80 to $100,000 range for total commitment, including our match. Yeah. Because nobody else, we didn't have money. And I, yeah. that's what I told Chris Curtis. Yeah. And, but, but, but just to clarify again, hardscaping cannot be put into MVP for money. So right. when you're talking about 80 to $100,000, you're not talking about MVP. You're talking about the materials and design work to put a new entrance on the building. Total cost outlay in cash from us as a select board and the um, school. Absolutely. Right. And it doesn't encompass MVP money. Because oh, the MVP, this no, it includes the match for the MBT Tim. See, see, but you you can't match. The match is only she, what's what's. I think what she's talking about is like we've got a hundred thousand dollars. Out of that, twenty thousand can be used for an MVP match, and so we really only have eighty for hardscape. Is that and where you're going? Engineering. Yes. yes. So we have sixty thousand dollars for hardscaping. Because yes. whatever what your design is going to get for twenty thousand dollars. This project is going to cost us a hundred thousand dollars. If we can get a hundred and twenty-five or a hundred and thirty or a hundred in MVP grant, great. But it's still coming out of our budget of a hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, the first design. the first step is to find out my, how much the hardscaping is going to cost yes. because that's going to inform. You know, if Chris Curtis does an MVP, he's going to have to have that number. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we, we figure that's why we wanted the stamped asphalt and not the permeable pavement because yeah, exactly. couldn't afford it. Couldn't yep. Afford it. Yep. So if you can track that down, Chris, that'd be great. Whether you got to get it from Jeff or it's already here somewhere, we could grab a hold of that scope or, or if you need or, us to talk to him and just make sure that he's hearing what we're saying yeah um, because it can be confusing yep sure yeah just for the record i don't remember ever seeing this but i can look through old emails and see if it, it. it up anywhere and if not i can get in contact with jeff yeah that'd be great thank you so much appreciate sure. that so we have appointments um, are you doing the leary lot or not that's that's separate it's not yeah that is not is that all taken care of well, <laughs> we're not talking about that. I can go home. You can go home. <laughs> well, I know we wanted the Leary lot to go in at, with the green features. And as far as I know, Tim, it is with Berkshire Design. Is that correct? I believe so. And I think that they've given us a quota like $50,000 okay. to do the engineering. And yeah. then we have $500,000 to do the whole project. Yeah. And some of like it that. is going to be MVP compatible, whether it's infiltration basins or whatever yeah. um thankfully it'd be a parking lot and uh, you know maybe we can get some buy-in from storefronts and stuff to do some you know plant maintenance right be good okay thanks thank Amy. you so See much you. Hey, thank you very much sorry to make you come in so we have a um a full-time appointment request from uh, Chief Pachurik. So dear honorable board, I am respect respectfully requesting the following individual be appointed as full-time police officer for the town of Deerfield effective Saturday, April 1st, 2023 with a term to expire June 30th, 2023. Uh, as the board is aware, we currently have one opening for full-time police officer due to Nate Walker departing for state police. Officer Jane Fitzgerald is a internal candidate who resides in Deerfield and has worked part-time for the agency for just shy of two years. Um, his starting salary in accordance with the contract will be 2542 hourly, which is patrol step one. Uh, James has associate degree from community college. So I'll make a motion to, or oh, enter okay. a motion to approve. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve effective um, April 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2023. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I, and um, welcome aboard, James. Yes, thank you so much for serving us for two years and hopefully longer. Is that is the appointment linked because it's like a probationary period, even though yeah. it's worked yes. there? Yes. 
No, yes. it's, it's it's just that uh, we appoint everybody in June. Okay, so we so do that every we'll year. We'll do it again. Yes, in Ju in June we'll. Uh, he get, he'll, yeah, he'll get reappointed with everybody in. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Appoint everybody at once. Yep. And then there was uh, let's see, I think that was it. Um, this was just I think a letter. There was um, very pay adjustment. Let me just. So this, just so everybody is aware, is a letter from the assistant town clerk, Cassie Sandorell. Uh, Cassie recently joined us, has come on board in late January, has done an outstanding job at adapting at a number of difficult and changing circumstances in that office, um, and wrote this letter to Casey regarding a change in compensation, just moving up a step given the increased demand and changes to the functionality of what she's doing in that office um the only question i had if if we approve the step now and she's eligible for another step july 1st is that correct did we budget the correct amount in that town clerk um line item or does we have to revisit that that uh, would have to be revisited yes okay because i wasn't sure you know this could mess up that budget so I mean, it's not, it's not, it's small money, but it would be off. I support this. Um, I have to say she's, she stepped up to the plate. Yep. And we, and we, you know, we're still down. We're still advertising for a town clerk. So yeah, out from the work load the literally few pennies here difference in the step is really pretty insignificant for the wonderful job she's doing and i feel like we're you know so lucky to have her mm -hmm. and she is friendly i have to say people skills count and yep. she's really, she's really friendly at the window for people to talk to um no matter whether people are polite or not um so i i I feel in support of this as well. I don't know if we want to discuss this a little bit more because we are, I know we have problems with our budget, but. Yeah, I think we can address that. And I think um, we're asking to do more work, obviously, in this transition period. We've done this for other employees as we've gone through transitions. So I think we'll get back under, you know, pretty soon with the advertising that are going on and the hiring that are going on. I think it's important to support her in this position. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, ultimately, while there's a vacancy in um, the uh, part-time position, um, we're having cost savings there. So the, the real effect of this will become apparent in the next fiscal year. Um, and once we hire somebody, and it's dependent on what a, what's that person hired at, et cetera. So I, I do um, think that uh, this is something that we should support. Yep. Okay. Well, okay. I'll make a motion that we... Um give a step increase to our new assistant town clerk. Effective immediately and I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn, S. I. Great, thank you. Chris, if you could get that rolling, however you need to do the paperwork on that, be great. Absolutely, thank you all for being receptive to that. I know Cassie is going to be very appreciative. Yep. Um, could you just make sure that the uh, Brenda knows about it so that she can adjust the budget pages? Yeah. I don't know if it needs to be revoted, but we should probably yeah. make sure people are aware of it so there's no consternation at a later date. Yep. Sure. Any other business? Think two, we do, right? two really quick things. Sure. Um, you, I assume that other people have, will get this, but. Um, Candace and actually um, Candace Bradbury Carlin from the library said that there's a big pothole in the library park uh, driveway. Oh. It's been there for months. And I coincidentally got a complaint from somebody before this arrived in my mailbox about half an hour ago. Um, and just requesting that, you know, somebody go over and fill in aggregate. It doesn't even have yeah. to be cold patch. Just fill in that so that people don't damage their cars going in and out of the the okay. library parking lot and um i also just wanted to mention that um denise and i have about completed our 
congressionally directed spending, otherwise known as earmarks packages for um, Congressman McGovern, Senator Warren, and Senator Markey, and we will be hopefully transmitting them by 6 p.m. tonight. Um, the request is for $4 million and uh, no guarantees, but it was an interesting exercise in filling out uh, government paperwork and uh, each each office had different formats, different questions, different concerns. Um, so thank you. It was a, a yeah, lot of work. It, 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 it's it. been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it'll pay some dividends. That's right. Literally. Jim, thank you very much for doing all that work. I um actually saw the application. <laughs> you showed I, it. It's the pretty gross. Is, always remember, but never when I'm in a meeting that I should report to you guys the warrant that I'm signing. So I, I know we did this for years, but um, signing a warrant today, it's warrant 23-19, um, um, the total of all disbursements is $1,613,833.79. Thank you, Trevor. Welcome. Thank you, Trevor. I'll look at them anytime. I just wanted to no, you always I, remember that I, I, I always want to report that, and then but they always fall on like different weeks and stuff, and they just happen to fall today. So, all right, any um, take a motion to adjourn. Well, I just want to report that we had a very successful meeting with uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor on. Thank you for that Friday, right? Friday, right? And uh, Rebecca Tapper Tepper was there. She's the new EEO staff, you know. A chief, and also um, our new MDAR, um, um, you know, commissioner. Agent, commissioner, ag commissioner. So, who is from Deerfield? So it it right. was very very successful, and um, I felt like we made a lot of connections with Kim Driscoll, the lieutenant governor, especially. Um, yeah. she's very good working with us already. So, right. I feel um, I feel like we have, I mean considering they've already visited Deerfield now and they came as a whole crew of people, they had the economic development people there and everything. I I feel like this is very positive. We're gonna get more maybe than we did out of the Baker administration who really yeah. forgot, forgot us out here. And, um, and they the biggest achievement was the Office of Rural Affairs. And of course, who they pick, and, and what kind of budget they have. But as far as I can tell, the budget is um, is at least six figures. So I have to say that it could be effective because if, if the governor is putting a line item in of that magnitude, then there will be actually staff. So um, I hope, I hope we'll be able to be successful mm -hmm. and have a working relationship with the new administration. Well, thanks for vis uh, visiting with them. Welcome them to Deerfield. Um, just a reminder on April 1st is our rural um, Western Mass Conference with MMA and, and Lieutenant Governor has said she's going to be there. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so hope everyone's coming and um, we could have you there. That's it. All right. All right. We all good? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.